Today we travel to Alcalá de Henares to talk about a very easy day trip from Madrid, perfect for anyone interested in history. Hola, que tal? Hello, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Let's make it clear from the start why we think Alcalá de Henares is a city worth visiting. Its university and historic center were declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO for being the first planned university city in the world, a city that served as a model for many other universities in Spain and other parts of the world. Alcalá is also the birthplace of Miguel de Cervantes, the author of Don Quixote. Let's visit Alcalá. First, let's see where Alcalá is and how to get there. Alcalá de Henares is a city of almost 200,000 inhabitants located 40 kilometers northeast of the center of Madrid. Due to its proximity and good public transport connections, it is very easy to get from Madrid to Alcalá. You could take a Cercanías train, a suburban train, on the C2 or C7 lines from either Chamartín or Atocha stations and a few others as well. 40 minutes after leaving Atocha, the train will drop you off at Alcalá. There are constant departures throughout the day. Always check the route of the train you are taking. You can buy your ticket on the spot at the machines in the station on the day of travel. You could also take an intercity bus number 222 3, which leaves from the Avenida de América interchange and will drop you off 40 minutes later in the center of Alcalá de Henares. There are many services throughout the day and you can buy the ticket from the driver. In the description of the video we will leave links so you can check the schedules and updated prices, both for the buses and the trains. When you arrive in Alcalá, you will have to walk to the historic center. 10 minutes if you arrive by train. 5 minutes if you arrive by bus. And now we head to the facade of the university where our tour of the city begins. The Colegio Mayor de San Ildefonso is where it all began. It was founded in 1499 by Cardinal Cisneros to be the center of the new university that was to improve the training of ecclesiastics. At the same time, Cisneros wanted the university to fit into a suitable urban framework, giving way to the growth of the city around the university. Its Renaissance-style facade is considered one of the best examples of 16th century Spanish architecture. Today is the seat of the rectorate of the University of Alcalá. The first courtyard you will see when you enter the colegio is known as Patio Mayor de Escuelas and also as Patio de Santo Tomás de Villanueva. It is a three-story courtyard around which the different university buildings are distributed. A corridor leads to a second courtyard, the Patio de Filosofos, the Philosopher's Courtyard, with a more disjointed personality as a result of the abandonment it has suffered over the centuries. And the last courtyard is the Patio Trilingue, the Trilingual Courtyard, named after the Latin, Greek and Hebrew students it has received over time. You can visit the courtyards on your own, access is free, but if you want to visit the two spaces we are going to show you next, you will only do so as part of a guided tour, which is what we did. We will talk about this visit, this guided tour, at the end of the video. The two spaces cannot be visited outside guided tours. The first place is the Capilla de San Ildefonso, the chapel which used to be the church of the Colegio Mayor. It is a burial place of illustrious professors of the university. It is covered with a spectacular artesonados, covered ceilings, a striking feature of mudejar art, art made by Muslim artists who remained in Christian territory after the end of their reconquest. 
In addition to the coffered ceiling, the highlight of the chapel's interior is the cenotaph of Cardinal Cisneros. It is a funerary monument made of Carrara marble, considered a jewel of Renaissance funerary art. The cardinal's remains are buried in the cathedral of Alcala. The second place you will only be able to see as part of a guided tour is the magnificent Paraninfo, the auditorium of the university, the main lecture hall built by order of Cardinal Cisneros. Over the centuries, it has hosted the university's most important academic events and to this day is still used for the annual presentation of the Premio Cervantes, the most important literary awards of the Spanish-speaking world. The ceiling of the auditorium is covered by another magnificent Mudejar coffered ceiling. We won't walk far to reach the next point of interest in Alcala, the Capilla del Oidor, the Chapel of the Oidor, an ancient chapel next to the old church of Santa Maria la Mayor, destroyed during the Spanish Civil War. Of that great construction, today only the Oidor Chapel and the Tower of Santa Maria remain. When the chapel was restored, the baptismal font where Miguel de Cervantes was baptized in 1547 was moved here. Inside you can also see a copy of the parish baptismal book. We didn't have time to go up to the Tower of Santa Maria, but you should know that access is free and that the views of Alcala from the top are beautiful. Next to the university and the Oidor Chapel is the Plaza de Cervantes, the most important public space in the city of Alcala. It is a rectangular square around which most of the city's tourist attractions are located. The square is the real center of life in Alcala. The space has changed many times throughout history, acting as an intermediate point between the city and the university. It was renamed Plaza de Cervantes in the 19th century when a statue was erected in honor of the city's most famous son. The next point of interest is in the Plaza de Cervantes itself, the Corral de Comedias de Alcalá. In the 16th and 17th centuries, when the concept of permanent theaters did not yet exist, the Corrales de Comedias were a place generally in the interior courtyards of houses where all kinds of theatrical performances took place. The Corral de Comedias de Alcalá, now consolidated as a local theater, is one of the oldest in Spain, having been inaugurated in 1602. The interior of the playhouse can be visited as part of a guided tour. Together with the Plaza de Cervantes, the Calle Mayor is the main center of social life in the historic center of Alcalá. It is a straight street between a corner of the Plaza de Cervantes and the Plaza de los Santos Niños, where the Cathedral of Alcalá is located. The Calle Mayor was the main commercial artery of the city and therefore had arcades along the street. The shops were on the lower part at street level and the houses on the upper part. The columns supporting the buildings are both stone and in the case of the older ones, wooden. Among the street's point of interest is the location of the Juderia, the old Jewish quarter of Alcala, and also the Antezana Hospital, one of the oldest in Europe. The Calle Mayor is full of shops, cake shops, bars and restaurants where you can enjoy the local gastronomy and take a break at the end of the day when the street is at its liveliest. The next point of interest in Alcala is on Calle Mayor itself. It is impossible not to recognize the Museo Casa Natal de Cervantes by the cute sculpture of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza that stands right in front of it. The museum occupies a 1956 building built in the traditional style of the region on the exact spot where Miguel de Cervantes was born and lived the first years of his life. The different parts of the two-story house, which surrounds a courtyard, recreate every day life in a 16th and 17th century house. The museum is free to visit. At the end of the Calle Mayor, there are three other places in Alcala worth visiting. The Cathedral, the Archbishop's Palace, and the Archaeological Museum. The Magistral Cathedral of Saints Justo and Pastor dates from 1514 and is one of only two Catholic 
churches in the world with the title of magistral, magistral, which implies that all its canons had to be doctors of theology. It was designed in the time of Cardinal Cisneros and is dedicated to two Roman martyr saints. Not far away, the majestic Archbishop's Palace, which cannot be visited, is a fortress palace that it is now the resident of the Bishop of Alcala. It was here in 1486 that the Catholic kings had their first meeting with Christopher Columbus. Catherine of Aragon the future Queen of England was also born here. Finally, it is worth taking some time in Alcala to visit the very interesting archaeological and paleontological museum, also known as the Museo Archeologico Regional. In addition to a very interesting permanent collection with remains from different historical periods, it always hosts temporary exhibitions of excellent quality, and the best thing is that access is free. After all that walking, you'll want to take a break in one of the many bars that dot the center of Alcala. You should know that Alcala shares the tradition of other Spanish cities where, along with a drink, serve some kind of complimentary tapa, small portion of food. So enjoy that great tradition. We usually tour the cities we visit on our own. Occasionally we hire a guided tour, which always adds quality and content to the visit. But in the case of Alcala, this is the second time we have visited the city on a guided tour, which we recommend to all of you. Only on a guided tour will you have access to several of the places mentioned in the video that you could not enter on your own, which are the Paraninfo, the Chapel of San Ildefonso and the Corral de Comedia. And you will also get to know many of the other places we have mentioned in the video. The price of the tour is not expensive. Between you and me, it's cheaper than the tip they now demand when you do that misnomer called free tour. We have always done that guided visit with excellent professionals and in the description of the video we will leave a link to the tour we did and which we highly recommend. Unfortunately, the tour is only available in Spanish. And that was our tour of Alcalá de Henares, a city that breathes history and which we think is a wonderful day trip from Madrid. You could dedicate half a day to Alcalá or depending on the time of the guided tour, a whole day to visit it at your leisure. The last time we were in Alcala, we decided to sleep in the city. As you know, we like to take it easy. And here we share our tip for staying in Alcala, the sensational Parador de Alcala. Paradors, in case you didn't know, belong to a network of charming accommodations. In many cases they occupy historical buildings, in others they are modern constructions, and in the case of Alcala they are a mixture of both. A modern parador occupying a historical building in a refurbishment project that has already won many architectural awards, perfectly integrating an incredible design in a setting, remember, declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It has been one of the best hotels we have stayed in Spain and we have traveled a lot around the country. We'll leave you a link in the description of the video so you can check out the details of the Parador. If you have any questions about Alcalá de Henares, take advantage of the commentary box to ask. Alcala is one of the sensational day trips you can do from Madrid. In the video that should appear on the screen now, we talk about the most important ones, trying to help you decide which one is best to complete. Don't miss it. We are already on our way to that video where we are waiting for you.